Hello everyone, Marco255 here, and welcome back to another video. Super Mario has always been one of my favourite game franchises, and I've played most of the mainline titles at this point. One of the first Mario games I played when it was released was Super Mario Galaxy 2, and I loved it and played it a ton. However, I never played the first Mario Galaxy game for the longest time until I eventually got it in around 2016-17. Obviously, I loved it, and I vaguely remember it being my favourite game ever for a certain amount of time, but that didn't last long due to Mario Odyssey coming around and changing everything. However, as you can clearly tell from the title, my opinion on this game has come back around to it being my favourite Mario game, and this video will be a description as to why. I've put projects like this on hold in my mind for the longest time, because I just thought it would make me seem, for a lack of a better term, cringe. But those thoughts I put behind me, as this is something I'm genuinely passionate about. Also, another thing, it's going to be this game's 15 year anniversary soon, so I guess that's another excuse to make this. With that being said, let's get into the video. This game, when it was released, was definitely one of the more divisive Mario games in terms of gameplay. Even normal movement is different from others as you can walk around entire small planets by just holding one direction. Now for this video, I played the 3D All-Stars version of the game, so I didn't need to use motion controls for a lot of it. When I saw that you could press Y to spin instead of needing to shake the controller, I thought that would change a lot about the game and make it less fun for me. However, I think I may like it better than shaking, which I know doesn't seem that odd of an opinion to have, but motion controls are some of my favourite things to have in a game, so this is pretty big for me. It is unfortunate that you can no longer get the definitive version of this and other games in this collection though, so you're all stuck with shaking the controller. It's fine though, because it's good. Speaking of motion controls, I should also mention stuff like Manta Ray Surfing and the Rolling Ball missions, as they still require motion controls. And I really enjoy them, as they are well spaced out from each other, and they're a nice change of pace when they appear. I also love Paul Stars, as the momentum you can get from them is so much fun to play around with. I love using the cursor to gather tons of star bits, the transformations are all really fun to use. Yes, that does mean I tolerate the spring mushroom. And the floaty feel of jumps is really fun to play around with. I mean, look at this. This game's gameplay isn't the best in the series, and it definitely feels a lot slower paced compared to other Mario games, but it definitely isn't the worst, and I much prefer it over games like Mario 64, 3D Land and World. I don't have much to say about the gameplay as I do with other parts of the game, so let's just move on to... in this game are all chances for the developers to let their creativity shine and make as many cool scenarios as possible, from fighting a massive robot with three legs and a head in the shape of a sniffet, to casually doing a race against penguins. There are few stars I dread getting in this game because of either boredom or it being tedious, and you don't necessarily need to get them in the intended order as the secret star and some exploration tool galaxies from getting star bits to feed hungry loomers, to getting question mark coins to get a star to destroy this chain shop. I really want to just go through some of my personal favourite galaxies right now. Bubble Blast Galaxy. This is a small one, but it's really intense as you have to go through 5 sections using the bubble mechanic with no checkpoints. It's got a lot of star bits, so if you need any, come to this galaxy, or better yet, go to Slingpod Galaxy. It has tons of star bits and I really enjoy sling pods themselves, probably more than the average person though. You know what galaxy is loved by many including me? Gusty Garden. It has really creative concepts like these apples which you need to provoke a caterpillar to move to each of them, and that golden chain chomp stuff that I mentioned earlier. Matter Splatter Galaxy is another loved one. Its concept is absolutely incredible with the ground disappearing and reappearing in bubbles. Gold Leaf Galaxy is basically a harder version of the previous galaxy, and it pretty much does everything that galaxy did better, apart from giving us this.
uh, uh, anyway, Space Junk Galaxy is a personal favourite of mine. It's got really fun areas like this place where you need to get close for the platforms to spawn. And the boss is solid too. And speaking of the bosses, I think they are way more memorable and fun than most bosses from other Mario games like 64, Sunshine, and even Odyssey to an extent. From King Caliente to this big Magic Koopa I can't be bothered to find the name of, they all are mostly memorable and fun to fight, even the Daredevil forms. I will admit though, Top Maniac is hilarious because of how easy he is. You can just beat him in a single minute if you're good. Also everyone, Bordergeist is not hard at all, his attacks are slow and predictable, I also love the Black Boom mechanic. Another thing I should probably mention in this section are prankster comets. These appear after the first quote unquote world of the game and incentivizes you to go to loads of different galaxies at once, instead of staying with one specific one. They also add challenge to previous stars you've already done, like Daredevil Comets decreasing your health to 1 for the mission, or Purple Comets making you collect 100 purple coins in a mission. Some of these are worse than others, but they're mostly enjoyable to play through. I got a bit off track then, so I might as well finish this section off with talking about my favourite galaxy in this game, and the galaxy series in general, Toy Time Galaxy. This galaxy has countless creative concepts, really fun areas, great pranks to comments, and overall it's just the most fun area to explore. On to the next section. The soundtrack to Super Mario Galaxy is the best soundtrack out of any Mario game ever, by a long shot. For most mainline Mario games on my playlist, I tend to have around 3-4 to four songs from each game. This game I have about 10. During the development of this game, the team decided a fully orchestrated OST would be detrimental to the overall feel of many places, and I'm so glad they decided to go along with orchestral soundtracks. This game was the first Mario game to have a fully orchestrated OST, and you can tell that they just went all in on the compositions of the songs. Even Galaxy 2 doesn't have nearly as many memorable songs on it, although it does have its own banger sprinkled in every now and then. Let's go through a few songs and explain why they work so well. I'll talk about other songs in later sections, so I won't talk about those here. To the Gateway Talk about an incredible way to truly start a Mario game, with this moment of quietness and somewhat somberness. There's something so magical about casually running around a small planet chasing bunnies with such a relaxing song in the background. I love it to death. Comet Observatory different themes for the main hub world, but my favourite is definitely the second version. It's got this sort of ballroom-like feel to it, if you know what I mean. It's really fun to vibe to when you're thinking about what galaxy to go to next. Gusty Garden Galaxy This song has such an uplifting and exciting feel to it that never gets old even 15 years on. It captures the absolute magic and whimsy of the galaxy it takes place in, and just sounds so good. Buoy Base Galaxy this song used in one of the small galaxies? It's got such a confident and powerful feel to it when it's used in one of the less interesting galaxies of the game. It's so damn good. Battle Rock Galaxy This song is in the same vein as Boo I Bass to me with its powerful and confident feel to it, which just works so damn well. I love it. Space Junk Road This is by far my favourite song in the game due to its composition. 
This song captures the pure magic of space perfectly with how unbelievably relaxing it is. This is the song that stuck with me the most from the first time I played this game. I'll never grow tired of it. And that's all the main songs I want to talk about here. There's this video called The Quiet Sadness of Mario Galaxy that I highly recommend you watch after this video because it goes more in depth about specific moments and what they mean, with music being a key part of those moments. Like I said earlier, there are more songs I'll mention in future parts because they add to the significance of specific moments, so yeah. Speaking of specific moments, it's time to talk about one of the biggest reasons why I think this game is on another level compared to most other Mario games, even the sequel to this one. The title screen I think perfectly represents this game as a whole. It starts off really grand and exciting, and then gets more calming and interesting the longer you stay on it. Showing that the more interesting stuff is lurking underneath, the more in-your-face usual Mario stuff we see, as well as the promotional material. When you start a save file for the first time, you get this intro story type thing, where you are told that every 100 years, a festival happens in the Mushroom Kingdom. We then get the usual Peach letter sent to Mario with full voice acting here, which I always found nice. We then are found at the festival with the most cheery music you can imagine where we can just have fun. <laughs> This really happy place where you feel safe turning into this hellhole within a minute is insanely good mood whiplash, with the music in the back giving so much intensity to the moment. I know we kind of expect Bowser to come out at any random point, but still. After walking up to the castle, we are taken up into the sky with it by this UFO Bowser has. That's right, Bowser has a UFO in this game, which is only shown at this point in the literal final level of the game. <laughs> Anyway, after we get sent to space, a magic Koopa appears and murders Mario. I don't know why, but this moment feels so much more significant than any other moment like it in Mario history. From Mario being sent to prison in Sunshine to pretty much the same thing, but from Bowser in Odyssey. It may be because this is one of the many Magic Koopas in the game, one random henchman Bowser has, showing how powerless Mario is in space at the moment. With Sunshine, I just can't take it seriously because the voice acting and the dumb Sonic Adventure 2 esque confusion. And with Odyssey, I think I don't think that one's as effective, because the whole opening cutscene is action. There's no false sense of hope, you're just thrown into this battle. There's not even any gameplay here. Anyway, after that failure, Mario wakes up on a planet far from home, with a star child called Aluma being the one to wake him. And this happens. <laughs> This moment here shows the loneliness of space perfectly, yet also feeling like you're safe from any danger. Then we get that incredible song to the gateway with the star bunny chasing and all, and it's just as magical and calming as before after all the craziness that came before. After getting all the bunnies, you meet my favourite Mario character of all time, Rosalina. And no, it's not just because I'm down treacherous for her. She has an incredible part of her character, and then we'll get to that later. But for now, I'll just say that she gives us the ability to spin, and tells us to get some power stars. From then on, there's not really much else that happens within the story for most of the game, to be honest. You have to wait until the final boss to get more story stuff. Well, that's sort of a lie. Is there's this place in the observatory you can get to after beating the third Bowser Jr. fight. Going into this house allows you to go back into Gateway Galaxy, with none of the usual transitions. The camera just fades in with that incredible song. 
Rosalina's here too, and she tells us that this planet's important to her. I wonder why. She also tells us how the Lunas will grow up to become stars, planets, etc. someday. She never knew that she would be in this important role, that being essentially the mother figure of what will become entire planets. We then get the only star in the game that uses the red star ability, allowing you to fly. It's a little disappointing that it can't be used in places outside of here in the Comet Observatory, but I can live with it. Anyway, the final boss and level. This is one of the more climactic feeling Mario games for no real reason, to be honest. It just feels really awesome when you see that cutscene where the Comet Observatory barges through and destroys countless enemy ships. Plus, the fact that you go into Peach's Castle for the final level is really cool, too. Another thing, the name The Fate of the Universe and Mario just walking in adds to the climactic feel of this last level. Speaking of the final level, it takes many unique areas and concepts and puts them all into little sections. It's not too hard, but the game doesn't strive for that, so it's fine. Once you get to Bowser, you have the best boss battle of the game, and one of the best bosses in Mario history. It takes a variety of different concepts which you've needed to use previously for the first two phases, like the rocks which you need to spin at a specific point to destroy, and using these green things to attack Bowser when he's rolling around. Neither of these feel like they aren't obvious tellings of what you need to do, so they're really effective from a gameplay standpoint. The last phase combines the second phase of this fight and the previous Bowser fights, making him roll around and do the usual jump dash you into you thing. Again, not hard, but super fun and really well made. Plus, I don't even need to describe the music at this point, you know it's so climactic and intense. When you take him down, the final Grand Star spawns, you save Peach and the world with it. black hole is created from what Bowser was trying to do, and both the castle and the observatory start to get sucked in. Everything seems hopeless. Until this happens. This moment is insanely thought-provoking, and we're not even done with this thought-provoking stuff yet. After that crazy black hole stuff, we are left alone in space with Rosalina and the noises of newborn Lumas. I'll let you read what Rosalina has to say, as it's really up to interpretation as to what all this means. What I think Rosalina means here is shown in the last cutscene here. As Rosalina disappears, we're left back at the festival from the beginning, with all the bad guys and good guys celebrating with each other. I mean, Petey Piranha's just chilling there watching Toads and Goombas wearing jack-o'-lanterns dance their hearts out. We then see Bowser and Peach are right next to us, and we see Rosalina say... Hmm? Oh. 
The camera pans out, the music swells, and Mario says... Welcome! Welcome, New Galaxy! Ending Mario Galaxy. What I think this ending is implying is that the universe essentially reset and did another big bang due to that black hole earlier. And this is stretching a lot and I don't really think this, it's just a theory that I just came up with. The Lumas did something in order to make everything right. That's why they willingly flew into it. It could also be that they're just accepting their fate, but I digress. When Rosalina says that Stardust forms to create new life and the cycle never repeats itself in the same way, I think that implies that when the black hole happened, the cycle of all life was reset, and because it never repeats itself, this cycle made it so that Bowser and everyone on his side were good on this cycle. We know that this is possible due to Rosalina saying that all life carries the essence of stars. That's just my way of looking into this ending. I could just be looking too deep into this children's game, but still, events like this just don't happen in any other Mario game, so there has to be more to this than what's obvious in my opinion. After the camera pan, the credits roll. It's the usual credits roll with the screenshots of various memorable moments throughout the game and all, but there's a post-credits cutscene if you get all 120 stars in the game. We are shown one final look at Gateway Galaxy, where we hear the song Family play behind watching Rosalima walking into this house and flying off. The last thing we see is the Luma that gave us the ability to spin at the very beginning, waving us goodbye as the screen fades to black. And now we can play as Luigi. This post credit cutscene is a fantastic ending to Rosalina's character after all the hardships she faced. Now you may be wondering, what hardships? She's a god essentially, w what do you mean? Well, let me turn you to my favourite thing Nintendo has ever done with Mario in anything, ever. The storybook. <laughs> The storybook in Mario Galaxy is an entirely optional part of the game which you unlock after getting a few stars in the kitchen, and it tells the story of a young girl trying to help her lost Luma find its mother. There's quite a lot of wholesome moments here, such as when the Luma gets star bits out and asks the girl if she wants them due to her not bringing any water with her on this massive journey across space, and when many Lumas emerge from a comet and start circling the girl saying, my mama. This is all good and fun, but there's this lingering thought in the girl's mind throughout this whole journey about her leaving her family behind. She eventually decides to take care of this Luma and all the others herself, but this isn't enough. This eventually leads to Chapter 7, The Telescope, where she looks through her dad's telescope she brought with her and finds her home planet and the hill she spent so much time on. She remembers stargazing with her father there. She remembers sledding down that hill with her brother, and, most importantly, she remembers having picnics with her mother there. This eventually leads to this moment, which I cannot describe with words. I'll let it speak for itself. This eventually leads to chapter 8, The Wish, where the girl starts crying again and the Loomis attempt to comfort her by saying that her mother's always been a part of her. 
After this fails, the Luma eventually decides to be reborn as a comet, and this cheers the girl up as she realises that this is her family now, and she has to do whatever she can to help them live as happy as a life as she once had. Once they're ready to leave, she'll see them off with a smile, just like what her mother did. However, she would like to revisit her home planet once every hundred years to remember what life was like. So you've probably figured it out by now, but if you haven't, it's heavily implied throughout the storybook that the girl is Rosalina. So much so that I'm pretty certain it's essentially canon. Nintendo did not need to add this. They just decided to add an emotional as hell backstory to Rosalina, just for the heck of it. It's completely disconnected from everything else in the game, and adds so much complexity to her as a character than pretty much all other mainline Mario characters. I'm not saying that I hate the other characters, I mean who doesn't love Waluigi, but still. I tend to prefer the characters with a lot of depth to them than the ones who have one focused on personality trait. Overall, the storybook adds a nice break from all the wackiness and fun of the main game, and adds so much more fascinating concepts than any other Mario game could ever dream of doing. I wish Galaxy 2 could have done the same. I know that I keep on disowning Galaxy 2, I do, I really like the game, okay? And it's just I don't like it nearly as much as this masterpiece. Super Mario Galaxy is a masterpiece in my eyes. It has so many more layers than even its successor, which it's just the wackiness and fun, but more. It's got fun gameplay, great levels, a flawless OST, and actual depth into the story, which is something I can't say about any other mainline Mario game. If you have a Wii, you need to check it out if you haven't already. Or better yet, play the 3D All-Stars version, if you can still find it somehow. I had so much fun making this video, so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. Anyways guys, that just about does it for today's video, everybody, I really hope you all enjoyed it. And if you like my channel, then why not subscribe, click the like button, check out these videos, share with friends and family, check out my Twitch channel, and click the bell. It's will let you be notified when any new videos come out. Anyways guys, I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.